bring into my education circle. Um, I don't like people to be salesmen, and when uh, so I test tested them already <laughs> in um, Remax and Fall River, and so I realized what they are offering is exceptional, and it really is coming from a giving standpoint. Um, and I believe the if you come from that standpoint, people really want to work with you. And so, um, with that being said, I want Sandra to talk a little bit. And then I'm going to invite Cheryl from the branch to come in and just say a couple words to you all, and then we'll let them begin. Sounds, Sounds good. good. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Perfect. So I want to thank everyone for coming. It's it's to me it's very exciting because you know my previous role, um, I always wanted to do things like this, and I wanted always to be able to add value to my partners. So I thank right. you, and I thank Evelyn for having this. Um, um, saying that, um, you guys, for except for Carlos, know that I recently transitioned over from Rhode Island Housing, I'm learning a lot. And just in the month that I've been here, um, or a month and a half now, almost two months, yeah. well, how time yeah. flies. Time flies. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. I can definitely see, um, you know, obviously the differences in, in the, the, the bigger aspect of lending and everything that I can offer, so I'm very excited about that. Um, and just with this presentation, also myself, um, I don't like video. Everyone knows that. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm also I'll looking forward to <laughs> <laughs> no. no, I'm also like to be on the video. Okay. Yeah. She just doesn't like just because the confidence she she <laughs> No, 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 not not so much that. I'm but, just kidding. But <laughs> Alex and I go way back, so if I turn around and slap him, please. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, so just you know, th these trainings I think are, are key to our business, and I'm looking forward to right. also learning and applying this also to my side. And also how I can partner up with with you know with my with my uh, partners so that we can make this more cohesive and right. more effective. Right. Awesome. That's fantastic. Well, we appreciate you being here too. Yeah. 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 Just learned that more today. What? <laughs> cohesive. Mm -hmm. oh. yeah, you something. I had a little an elementary school teacher who was adamant about she'd give us a word a day. And we had to use it throughout the, the, the day. No, okay. yeah. And and it was like my mom would come home and I would come home and she's like, not the word of a day, not the <laughs> word of a day again. <laughs> I throw these words out there, and on my nephews, I do the same thing to them. And one's 21, and the other one's 16, and they always say, let's use big words so mom can't figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. So, yeah. all right. This is Cheryl. Cheryl's. Um, I'm going to let you introduce yourself because I don't know your title. I'd have to read it. Um, so um, Cheryl is here to help you all. Part of not only what we're doing here and why I love working at Big Host is that um, we really want to help all those in the community. Right. And so we, we will bring education. We'll do things in here that will help you. That's mm -hmm. someone else that's coming. Okay. So, good morning. Come My name in. is uh, Cheryl Pappy. It's a small session. I, I yes, it is. Personalized. So, um, um, Cheryl's going to tell you a little bit about how, um, from the bank's perspective, because um, we, we know the mortgage perspective, they can help you, so we want you to know how, from the bank perspective, we can help you as well. All right. We'll start again. So, good morning. I'm Cheryl Pappy. I'm the supervisor here in the Cranston office of Bay Coast Bank. Um, we're very excited to be in the neighborhood. So Bay Coast Bank primarily has areas in southern Massachusetts, so you can find us mostly in Fall River, in Bedford, Dartmouth, Attleboro, in Rhode Island. We're also located in Tiverton and Little Compton. So the bank is growing, business is booming, and we're moving into the West Bay. So I'm a true Rhode Islander, so I don't know about any of you, but traveling over the bridges can be very traumatic. <laughs> so, you know, my parents live in Bristol, I'm in Warwick, so I, you know, they have to pack a lunch to come and visit me. But um, we really want to make sure that our with the, we are here and available for our customers. So for our business customers, it's very important that we offer all of the services that you would find in any full service bank. And I can tell you with full disclosure that I've worked in a large commercial bank, actually a couple of them. Um, so anything that the larger bank can do, we can do for you as well. Our small business checking account is primarily the account that most of our local business customers find themselves feeding into. There's no fees associated with that account. Since we've been here, we opened um, March 4th, we've opened several business accounts. So again, welcoming anybody in the local community to come and open an account with us. I enjoy working for Bay Coast Bank because it certainly is a community bank 
and we find that if we are going to be working in the community we also want to serve the community that we work in so it's very important to us that we get out there we get to know our customers we volunteer and give back I personally mentor a child um, in the Cranston uh, Gladstone School and I get much, much, much satisfaction out of that. So it's important, education is very important. I know that um, I've only been with the company for six months, but I find that um, we, you know, we, we put our, our money where, what part do you say, put your money, money where your mouth is? <laughs> we're out there, we're always giving mm -hmm. back. Education, there is a huge budget for education. So I, I asked the question why, you know, I don't see Bay Coast Bank on TV. I don't see advertising. I don't see little postcards going out there saying, come and open a checking account and we'll give you $100 like some of the other banks do. And I was told that that money, the marketing money that the larger banks use, we use to give back to the community. We give back to mm -hmm. education. So again, for me, coming from a larger institution, I find that this community bank gives a lot. The other thing I like to talk about is cool technology. So we have ITM machines. Anybody ever heard of an ITM versus an ATM? So the ATM, you go up, put your card in, do what you need to do. The ITM has a virtual teller who sits in Swansea. And that teller can walk you through any transaction. That machine is loaded with cash and coin. So even if you're cashing a payroll check, $150.73, the machine will give you cash and currency. The machine also takes payments. So small bank, a lot of uh, cool technology, and also very customer centric. Um, again, that's why I'm here, because it's important to me that we take good care of the customer. It's not a product push here. It's what you need. We find the right fit, and we give that to you. So I'm a talker. I'll say goodbye. <laughs> but, um, welcome. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank I'm going to put this here uh, just in case anybody wants to take notes. You can grab some sheets from there um, and, and a pen. Free to, feel free to keep the pen. Um, and you have little gifts in front of you as well. So I'm just going to hand it off. Um, and then uh, food is here. But okay. I'm not sure if it's kind of early for you guys. It's up to you if you wanted to grab something and then literally eat while you're learning or you want to kind of wait till afterwards. What's the consensus? That doesn't matter. All right, we'll wait. Yeah. Wait. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're awesome. hungry? You can go. Absolutely. Come on in. Go ahead, guys. Uh, that's just fine. Just exactly. so you know, in case I go a little fast, we will be recording this. We can send you a recording, and we will give you the PDF of this whole thing, so that way, if you have to go back through it for any reason. Do you have a okay. sign sheet to get our information, or is everyone going to provide that to you? What was that? Uh, she usually had. A, she yeah, usually okay. provides okay. a sign off sheet and then just shares it. Okay. Yep. Awesome. We'll wait a couple minutes when we get back. Yeah, well, yeah. She wanted me to stop now. I don't know. Oh, wait for me to get back. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I'll get you more right now. Sorry, guys. No, 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 no worry. About it. It's okay. All right. Show us awesome. Yes. <laughs> So first off, I want to thank Evelyn for inviting me here to be able to deliver some value for you guys. So I'm Justin Bachenbach. This is my business partner, nice John to True. Nice to meet you guys. Uh, we've been digital marketing and advertising for the past week. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, for, the past, for the past four years, um, That's like you know, one. we've we've put in over fifteen thousand hours in the past four years of perfecting our craft and using the newest technology, software, and stuff that is out on social Thank media. You very much. <coughs> so before we even jump into the social media part, I want to kind of take a step back because, you know, dealing with people is a major thing. We all are in a customer-driven industry, no matter what we're doing. So we're constantly dealing with people. So this kind of helped me out a long time ago. Maybe you guys have heard of it before. Has anybody ever heard of the four color personalities? No? Okay, so before we get into that, the three key factors that we want to be able to have with someone is connection. And to make that connection, we want to find the person's wants, needs, pains, or pleasures. When we can find these wants, needs, pains, and pleasures, we know how to deliver what they want to hear. Next is we want to find their color personality, and we're going to talk about that, and then speak to them in their language. So in order to be able to do business with anybody, we obviously need to have that know, like, trust factor because, I mean, who does business with someone that you don't know, like, or trust? It just doesn't happen. 
So that's a major key to someone's buying or selling decision right there is they know like trust. So there's four color personalities, it's yellow, green, blue, and red. And each color represents a personality and each personality represents a different language. So our goal when we're dealing with people, because again, when we're working offline, dealing with referrals, that's more market. We're dealing with a cold market on social media, so we have to kind of interact with people a little differently. They don't see our facial expressions. They don't see, you know, our body language. They only hear a tonality or in text. Using emojis kind of helps with that too. So we're going to go over the first one, yellow. Yellow is more of the lover type. So they're caring, encouraging, sharing. This is more like my mother. We all know someone who's yellow in our life, right? We're all yellow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A little bit. So they make decisions based on feelings and emotions. The second is green. They're more of the info and facts. So they're more cautious, ask a lot of questions. They do a lot of research. They need a lot of facts. So this type of personality makes their decisions based on data. And again, we all know someone who's green. Yeah. The third one is blue. So blue is the outgoing type. They're energetic, they're uh, enthusiastic, dynamic. They, they just love to have fun and be around a lot of people. So blues kind of make their decisions based on exciting opportunities. So fourth is red. Red's more of the bossy type. This is like my father here. Competitive, <laughs> demanding, determined, strong will. They, they love being in control, they're driven with profits. So this person is more of on personal gain, personal growth. Now, we're all kind of all the colors, but we just have some that are more predominant, some that shine a little bit more. But when we're home with our kids, we're more yellow. <coughs> when we're at work, we're more red. When we're on vacation, we're more blue. So we're kind of like a chameleon, you know, depending on the situation, but we all have one color that shines a little bit more. And that's the thing we need to pay attention to. We need to be able to talk to someone on their level, on their language. So using this in a real estate example, try selling a house to a red personality, speaking to them in a blue, I mean a yellow language. You might be saying, hey, this is going to be, you know, a great family room. We're going to have wonderful memories together. The red doesn't care about that. They want to know how much are they going to get for the house in five years. Mm -hmm. So talk to, uh, sell a house to a blue personality speaking to them in a blue language. You know, this is going to be an exciting adventure for you and your family. Can't wait for the pool party. So you're going to connect with someone a lot more when you're speaking to them on their level. It works with our children, our spouses, friends, co-workers, whatever it is, when you speak to them on their level, in their language. So now we're going to kind of jump into the social media part. Who here is actively using Facebook every day? Pretty much everybody. Good. So a lot of people ask, what's the difference between Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn? So Facebook is more for everyone. Anyone from 18 to 65 plus. All backgrounds, nationalities, businesses, everything you can think of. It's just a, a melting pot of everybody. So Instagram is more the young generation, the millennials. I like taking pictures of my shoes and my food and my cars and all the stuff that I have. And LinkedIn is more of business professionals, CEO, suit and tie, you know, corporations. So when it comes to real estate, now I see people doing real estate on Instagram and LinkedIn, but you get better results when you're doing it on Facebook. That's where you're gonna find more of your customers and your target market is gonna be on Facebook. 90% of businesses right now are using social media. And I say social media, but we all mean Facebook for marketing purposes. Facebook's the biggest marketing platform in the world right now. And it's the, the platform where you can get the most attention and the most leads and build your business versus all of the other platforms that are out there. The only problem is there's just a lot of people not utilizing it the correct way. So is anybody actively generating leads on Facebook? Couple. Couple, here and there? Yeah. So these are just some stats real quick. 2.2 billion active monthly users. That is huge. That just shows you that most of the time your customer is going to be on Facebook. 1.2 billion of them are in Messenger. You send someone a text message, they don't really answer too quick. You call them, they don't answer that fast. 
email, you're lucky if you get a response. You hit someone up on Facebook Messenger, they see it instantly. You all so, know what Facebook Messenger is, just want to make sure. Okay. Does everybody use Facebook Messenger? Mm -hmm. More than texting? No? No. Well. <coughs> so, 1. billion of them are mobile users. I'm sure all you guys are mostly on mobile versus desktop or laptop. This is very important for the future of things we're going to be going over. So we want to go to where our, our customers are and our clients are. So why is social media important in this digital age? Well, it's going to build your online presence. If people don't know who you are, they're not going to be able to do business with you. It increases your brand awareness. If they don't know what business and service you provide, they're also not going to be able to do business with you. So being on social media is going to build <coughs> both of these up. Growing a, a larger network, you know, offline, it's, you know, referrals is one to one. When you're on social media using Facebook, it's one to many, one to hundreds. You can get out to so many more people a lot faster. Obviously, all of those end up generating more referrals, but it all depends on how you're utilizing your social media too. Gathering information, insight on your audience is very important. If we don't know who we're pitching to, selling to, who our target market is, we're just selling to anybody. We're throwing spaghetti against the wall and hoping it sticks. Most of the time, we're like, I'll sell to anybody who's breathing. But most, it, it, we need to realize that we all have a target market. I would imagine that most people that are going to buy or sell a home, good majority of them are married, right? I would imagine. We use that when we're targeting on Facebook as well. A lot of married people. It pulls up all of our target market. After you've kind of worked on all these, it's going to start to position you as the professional and the expert. Just from John and I doing videos on different things that we know um, through the years, that is what has positioned us as the professional and expert for putting that out there, letting people know, hey, I'm Justin, I do this for a business, and here's some value on it as well. It's going to build you up. And again, our whole goal, obviously, on social media is to generate leads. But by following this, it's going to help generate leads. But again, I'm not here to teach you to post on Facebook. You know, I'm not going to tell you, hey, post quotes. It does help. It gets you out there. It brings up your, your awareness. But it's not going to always generate you leads. So we want to make sure we have a personal profile, any business page set up correctly. Now, most of our leads business customers clients everything has come from our personal profile we don't do a lot of business through our business page believe it or not okay. we use that more of just a place for people to come and take a look at what we do what we offer mm -hmm. but also the main reason is so we can run Facebook ads without a business page you can't run Facebook ads so we're gonna actually go over the proper setup in a minute engage with your friends list some people will just make posts every single day and they wonder why no one is seeing their posts, no one's engaging with them because they're not engaging back. You can make more friends on Facebook or in life <coughs> by paying more attention to them and what they're doing in their business and their life than trying to get people to pay attention to you and what you're doing. So the more you interact with your friends, when you do go make a post, it's going to be seen by a lot more people. It's kind of a way to beat Facebook's algorithm. Everybody's heard about Facebook's algorithm. It's true. Everything has an algorithm. Now, again, when I get up, the first thing I do is I'll go like, comment, and share on as many people's posts as I want. I don't just hit like. I make sure it's something that I resonate with, something that I like, something I can connect with. Be a real person. Drop some love on there. Drop some likes. Later on, when I go make a post, now my post is seen in a lot more people's time feed. Now my stuff's going to be seen by a lot more people. If you like my stuff, now my, your friends are going to see my post. So it's a way to get you out there and start building that. Posting content, text, pictures, videos. We know you love videos, so. Um, you know, some people post three, four, five times a day. You really don't need to. Again, it's just to put out some content, whether it's value or quote, something about what you're doing going on in your business. So pictures, pictures are better than text. Videos are better than pictures. Video, like I said, is king. People love to watch videos. Anytime you can do a Facebook Live, again, a lot of people don't like doing them. 
They're not easy to do in the beginning if you've never done them, but the more lives that you do again, if you have a listing, you go to the listing, you do a walkthrough, let people know about it, that's gonna get them to watch your lives and keep, you, you, you consistently being in front of them. They're gonna remember you when someone needs a house or they know someone has a referral. Join some Facebook groups. Uh, there's lots of real estate groups. I guarantee there is a real estate Rhode Island group around here that you can be become a, a part of. And a lot of times, homeowners will go in there and they'll want to try to find a realtor. They want to see who's given value, who they can trust. So, you know, join homeowner groups as well. You guys know a lot of connections, I'm sure, with carpenters, painters, electricians, whatever it is. You have a lot of connections. You've networked a lot. You can use that if someone in that group, there's a homeowner looking for something. Hey, I know a guy, he lives right down the road, he does amazing <coughs> work. Well, now she's gonna remember you. Well, yeah, I'm a realtor. So, you know, it's gonna help build all that up. Gathering video testimonials and reviews. John and I, we did that with a bunch of other businesses we've had. This business, instead of putting on Facebook, we're kind of building a whole page to where people can just go and check out all of our stuff. But I see a lot of realtors, and ones I work with, they're not utilizing this. If you sell a home, most of the time they kind of just take a picture of the couple in front of the home with the sold sign and stuff. That's awesome. Ask them to do a two second video. Yeah. Hey, what's up? We worked with Evelyn. She got out, she, you know, we bought our first house with her. She was amazing. She did everything she needed to do. Like, that's gonna move you guys so much further along. Just a one second testimonial from somebody. Again, most people are afraid to get on camera. But if they're not on Facebook Live and they're just doing a quick video or a quick with their husband or wife or whatever, it's gonna be a little bit easier and that testimonial is gonna bring you a lot more referrals. Yeah, it's gonna serve you for a longer period of time. When we do a Facebook Live, we get a lot more engagement, but the reviews that we get when people see us in our business page, the first thing they do is they look at the About section and they go straight to the reviews. Just like if you wanted to buy a phone, you go and look for reviews, you look for how many stars. So those stars equate to basically reviews on social media, it's the same thing. Exactly. Everything's changing. <clears throat> you know, everybody used to want to be on Google. You got to be on Google. Now, Facebook is more of the place to be. Like, when you're going to be working with someone, best believe they're going to your profile and they're looking through your pictures, your content, your videos, and everything. So, nowadays, that's where people can connect with us. We're normally building relationships personally, face to face. It's a lot quicker than doing it over social media. But the more content that you put out, people are gonna go there and they're gonna watch your videos, they're gonna scroll through your posts. That's building a relationship and rapport with them. You're not even doing anything. You just created this content. So I've had people reach out to us and want to do business with us, whether a customer or client, that have been following us for months, right. years. And all of a sudden they're just like, I love what you guys do, I'm ready, because they've been watching and following all of our stuff. So you, you don't even know how many people are watching you and following you, but there are. So, you know, we want to make sure we have a clear cover photo. Um, there's lots of people out there that have your name. I didn't think anybody else had Justin Doffenbaugh, but there's one other person <laughs> in the United States. Um, but, you know, most of the time you have a lot of people who have your name. So when someone goes to, you know, they get your card, they're like, oh, I'm going to look you up. They go on Facebook, and that's the first thing they do now is go on Facebook and look you up. There's a lot of people with your name. You want to make sure you stand out in that search over everybody. So having a clear photo, you can vis visibly see your face. A lot of people have a photo with too much going on. There's like three, four people in the photo. They're not going to know who you are. So from there in here is just a quick intro. My goal when people come to my page is to get an idea of what I do without me explaining to them what I do. So this is why in my intro it has a little bit of what I do. And then all of my social links are here. I had to actually make this new one. Facebook is always updating. They used to keep the links down here, now they moved it into this box. But this is where you connect your business page on Facebook. Any websites, landing pages, if you're using a landing page that the company gives you. Your calendar, Calendly. I don't know if anybody uses that. Free, free scheduler. Yeah. It's awesome. You can even add questions, qualifying questions before someone can actually book an appointment with you. So when people come here, they don't have to go anywhere else. They can see who I am, what I do, here's my links, you know, here's the people that follow me, here's my calendar, here's my website. I have social proof. You know, that right there adds a lot. 
just having social proof. Again, we don't get paid off of likes, comments, and shares, but the more social proof you have, the more engagement, the more you're gonna build that know, like, and trust with complete strangers. I'm telling you, I've had people reach out to me and act like they've known me for years and I never knew who they were, it's just from them following my stuff. Yeah, we even had people come up to us and say, can I get your autograph? I'm like, for what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah, okay, sure. So underneath this is the feature photos. Uh, if you were on your Facebook, you'd actually have nine more photos down here, okay? These are the photos that you upload to your timeline and post. These are the photos that you can go into your phone, laptop, and computer and pick which ones you want featured so when people come to your profile, this is what they're gonna see right away. So me, I like to show people I'm a family man, I have a wife, I have kids. It makes someone connect with you a lot more right there. I have my business page. Again, it's here, but it's also here. I have my Facebook private group, Facebook ads for real estate professionals. And then, um, you know, just letting them know a little bit more. I made this sign just so when people come here, they obviously gonna see. I don't have to go crazy trying to explain. Here's the last class we just did, some results of an ad, and this was us speaking on stage. So people are gonna get a lot of information when they come here. And just real quick, this cover photo, I notice a lot of people when they upload this, you have stuff that's cut off. You, if you use Canva, and we're going to have the link for that stuff in, at the end, you're going to want to use the Facebook cover photo one. It gives you the correct pixel size, 820 by 312. So when you do have it on there, it's not cutting stuff out. Sometimes I'll even upload the picture, the cover photo from my mobile and make sure it is responsive from desktop to mobile. Looking, you know, keeping your stuff professional looking is definitely a, a big thing. So. A lot of people don't know how to actually put your links in here. If you're on your home page and you clicked the about, or even there's a little pencil here that shows up, it's gonna bring you over to here, okay? Under contact and basic info is where you can add your website, social links, calendar, whatever you want. The more stuff that you put there, the more information you can give to people for them to contact you, the better it's gonna be. I don't know if I ask, does anybody have a business page set up? Two, got two people? Okay. I see a lot of people set up a page and they think this is their business page because what they do is they come in the about and um, under work and education, you can connect your business page to your Facebook. But the problem is they never actually create a page. They just go in here and try to cr um, connect a page that was never actually built. So this is the result that you get when you don't actually build a page before you just connect just this this page here to it. So we wanna make sure that you wanna go to create on your home page and then to page. This is where you're gonna be able to go in and build out your business page. And again, this is more for people, most people are gonna go to your profile, they're definitely gonna go to your business page as well after that most of the time. So you wanna have that set up as well. As you can see, I have a question for you. Yeah. So, a prof, your Facebook page. I guess I'm getting confused. It's a business page, not a business profile. Am I <coughs> saying too? Yeah. No. Up? So you have a like personal profile, and then you have a business page. Okay. It's, yeah. Two separate. Facebook wants you promoting, selling, doing anything from your business page, right? If you do that from your personal profile, they can actually ban your account. Yeah, and that's one, of, that's one of the main reasons why a lot of your content doesn't get shared because if you're sharing a lot of more like selling stuff on your personal profile and not your business page, you actually, get, you actually go below the algorithm and you can't get your stuff seen quite a, as often. A way to get around that is if you have a business page set up, make your post, your live, your, your listing that you have, and then share it to your personal page. Right. That way, Facebook doesn't say, I, I, a lot of stuff that we do a lot of training, so I don't really care. I'll put it on my personal page. That's where most of my, my friends, clients, family, and everybody is. But, um, you know, it is good to kind of, you know, when you're selling something, pitching something, offering something, it's good to post it on your business page and then from your business page to your profile. And again, a lot of times we don't bother doing that because I'm not worried about getting my profile shut down. We're not really pitching through there. Right. We're giving tons of value all the time.
What happens if you put it on your personal and then pit, and then share it to your business? You can do that too. Um, what's again, the effect though? What happened? What's different about that? I, honestly, I don't think real estate's going to be that big of a deal if you're putting it on your personal. When you're selling products and stuff like that, constantly pitching on your page, what happens is people get pissed <coughs> off. They don't want to see it. Yeah. They get you get reported, and then you get banned. Because yeah, they start hiding your content. There's a little button there. You start hiding their content, and the more they hide your stuff, the less likely your stuff will be shown. So, for example, in real estate, if you put too many this week's listing, like that's all you're posting is about your listings, not about your life as right. well. Yeah. If if you just do that, then then they're going to again ban you, whatever. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um. So for your business stuff. So if you have if you have a listing, post it on your business page and then share it. Right. Now, if if you're thanking someone for a closing, that's okay yeah, because yeah. you're taking a picture immediate. It's not something that right. people can go onto the web and find. Right. So that's yeah. so that's something you could put on your personal and then share it. I've been doing business. it the other way, and, and I, I guess that <coughs> probably I should put a list. I put a listing on there, put it on the business page, and then uh -huh. go to the personal. Yes, and I've then share it. I've been doing it. I, I do it the other way a lot too. Um, obviously, we're not real estate, so yeah. In real estate, I'll that's, that's that. the trick with the with the Facebook. Mm -hmm. All I know is, you if know, it's all listings on there. Then they're going to be like, he's right. trying to sell a house. Oh, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Well, so I don't have enough listings for that. So, <laughs> <laughs> so if you are going to put it on your page, it's always good. Uh, we would do two, three, four posts of our life, giving back value, doing a training, and then something of business right then some value posts then business mixing right. it up because people are not going to follow yeah. you if you just okay. always business business <coughs> business yeah mm -hmm. you gotta show people that you're a real person yeah, so exactly. again we have our you know logo here um we have a brief description here as well on your business page you can add any a photo and a brief description of what you do again we have a, a you know a professional looking photo here um you can set up a button now I would definitely suggest either doing a messenger button or a calendar button so when people go to your page they can actually send you uh, a message or they can go book an appointment with you we have a lot of videos showing this stuff too so you might be like yeah that's nice dressing how the hell do I do that <laughs> you know so we actually have some stuff we're gonna yeah. provide for you guys as well um, you know like it says let your your content work for you 24 7 this was um, a post of some results. This was a video about 23 first time home buyer leads that we got in like 25 hours, I think it was. Mm -hmm. um, so we've had people reach out over this. There's not many likes on it. Again, you're gonna get more engagement on your personal profile than you will your business page, but best believe people are gonna follow your content and see what you're doing. Uh, we answer very quickly when it comes to Messenger, plus we have an automated Messenger chat bot. I'll tell you guys what that is in a minute. Uh, so when people come here to leave a message, it actually interacts with them. So it offers that support to people at all times. And again, over here we have our phone numbers, you know, um, website, more information. So when people come there, they're, they're pretty good with information. Got a quick question. Yeah. You said like you could have like a calendar and like the business page, right? Could you link it to like a calendar that you already have? Like, yeah, as long as you have a URL, you can do it. Yeah, you just put the link awesome. in there. Yep. Yeah. Yep. If it's some long, long link, I don't know. Sometimes we get links that are huge. It looks very ugly. If you go to bitly.com, you can create your own short link, so you can name it whatever you want. So we're gonna chat real quick. I'm sure a lot of you guys use email, correct? Email is slowly going like this. Right. Uh, open rates are very, very low nowadays. Again, because most people are here in Messenger. So again, it's been around for 40 years. It's slowly dying as we move towards the digital age. Email, the open rate right now is like 17% up to 28%. That's if you can write good copy too. A lot of people are a lot lower. And it also depends on the industry. Emails range. But Messenger, the open rate is like 90, 98%. Yeah. Sometimes it's even higher than that from us. I don't yeah, know, it's it pretty is. crazy. Yeah. You know, just because someone goes to your email doesn't always mean they're gonna answer back. But Messenger, you know when they've seen it because the bubble drops down yeah. and you can tell that they saw that. The cool thing about Messenger is that it pops up automatically on your phone. So you're more apt to open it up versus an email when you have to actually go to Gmail. When you get a message from Messenger, it just shows up on your phone, whether you like it or not. Yeah, yeah. of course. Right. Yeah. 
So the whole reason why we're, we got into Messenger, we're going to be chatting about that because we're going to be talking about chatbots. Has anybody ever heard of, you know, automated chatbots, IAs? You know, it's almost like an artificial intelligence. I don't want to get you too confused about that. Just breaking it down, plain and simple. It's like having 24/7 support on your page, being able to provide your clients with information value at any point in time and collect data at the same time. So when you have this automatic flow built out and connected to your business page, if someone comes there, even if they say hi, you can put in a reply for hi. So it's pretty cool how you can build out a whole conversation and direct people the way you want. You can connect them to your business page. Um, a post, if you make a post on your business page, you can make it so if someone comments on it, it pulls them into Messenger and starts a conversation with them. So can they can, so in essence, someone can actually um, post or reply to your post. So me, I wake up at five in the morning. A lot of people will get a happy birthday or something like that at like six. And <laughs> yeah. um, and then this chat box, messenger chat bot, bot will end up. If I do something like that, it'll send me a message saying thank you. And I'm like, this person's up already, and they're probably not. It's probably automated. If it's on a business page. If it's on a business yeah. page. Yeah, personal profiles you can't right. use this stuff with. Okay. But you can, you, you can build, and it, it, people use an email list to build it. You, you want to have a bigger network. You can build a subscribers list through Facebook and you build it very fast. Yep. Sometimes it takes a while to build an email list. You can build a email list or subscribers list using me, uh, Messenger and many chats. It, it, it just it builds up so quickly. You can send email broadcasts, just like if you have an email sequence, you know, one day this goes out, day two this goes out, you can do the same exact thing with Messenger. Yeah. So the things we're talking about today obviously are things that are very key in this digital age here that, that create results. So obviously having your social media set up properly, automating things with Messenger, and then being able to send advertisements out. So those are going to be the three key things that we're really going to be going over here. So I'm not going to touch on all these. I don't want to uh, take take up everybody's uh, too much time today. So this, like I said, this chatbot offers 24/7 support. So this is an actual chatbot that we built out for a client. Um, this one is the demo. But when someone goes to your business page and they want to chat with you, it'll say click get started. Once they click get started, you now have them as a subscriber it's automatically going to pop up this message. Hey Justin, we're excited to have you with your real estate needs. Are you looking to buy or sell a home? Select an option below. They have an option. They don't have to type in anything. You're making this very convenient for the person, but you're controlling the way of the conversation. Okay. This whole real estate flow here qualifies a lead before you even have to jump on the phone with them. And again, we're not trying to take out personal contact here. That's how we close leads. But if this can help do some of the work for you, it's gonna cut down your workload as well. So again, it's gonna give quick replies. If they click buy, it's gonna take them this road. If they click sell, it'll take them down here. It's gonna ask them, you know, when are you looking to move? Where are you looking to move? What's your price range? Are you working with a real estate agent? Have you been pre-approved? It's gonna ask all of the questions because we've sat down with realtors and said, what other qualifying questions you ask somebody? We took a majority of things that were the same and then we put it into our flow here so the cool thing is is you can collect all this data going through here name email phone number whether they were a buyer or a seller what was their price range would they have for a down payment location all of these questions you can ask and hear and they answer and it'll save all of this data for you real quick this is what the flow looks like it's a little confusing i understand that but um, just know this is the top flow of a buyer down here is the seller. Each of these are actions. So if someone comes to my page and they click buy, I'm gonna get a notification on my phone saying, John Smith just started your buyer flow. Now I know my lead is going through my flow. I can jump in and watch them at any time. I can intervene at any time and cut the chat bot off, or I can actually just watch them interacting back and forth but you're collecting that information, you're understanding your audience and what they need. Uh, we've seen that 90% of people that go through this as a client or a customer, they all want to buy. There's less sellers, there's more buyers. 
So all of this collects data. It lets you know who clicked buy or sell more, who had this for uh, you know a credit score more, who was using this for more of a down payment. So all this is telling you the stats of each card on how far they made it, who's clicking more. This allows you to better these. As you can see, it's sent to 36 people, 29 delivered, opened by 28, clicked by 17. These are amazing open rates compared to email. So you can see that chatbots and Messenger, even if you don't use chatbots, Messenger is an amazing uh, uh, tool to use. So the system that we use to connect Facebook, and I know it's a lot of information to gather in. So you have Facebook, we use ManyChat, which is the automated chats that you can create, and we connect it to Facebook. They go hand in hand. Within ManyChat, all of that qualifying information that's being collected in here is also being put into your ManyChat account. So when you can come in here, as soon as someone clicks Get Started, you get their profile picture from Facebook, their name, and this information here. Once they start going further into the flow, they're going to know where they came in from. Did they come in from you know, a code that I had? Did they come in from my mortgage broker flow, my realtor flow, wherever it's, you can add a tag and where they've opted in from. It's gonna tell you, are they working with an agent? Yes or no, closing date. It gives you all the information that they filled out going through that flow is gonna be here for you to come and check up. You're gonna get their email, phone number, and you can start a chat with them right from here. So this is absolutely essential to kind of automating things and collecting that information and building that email list. So now we're gonna get into me, I, I think this is the most important part. Social media being on there, being established is good. Um, being able to automate things is good as well. But to me, this is the most important part because this is where the results come in. So has anybody ever boosted a Facebook post? Okay. Yeah, you don't want to do that. You're just giving money to Mark Zuckerberg when you do that. Um, boosting a post is, it's just almost like a brand awareness. It's just showing people. It's not telling Facebook what you want them to do for an action. We want people to act. We want to generate leads. So unless you're telling Facebook what to do, you're not going to get any results from it. So real quick, before we get into the ads, I want to show you how an ad works. So ready? Can we take a break, just a quick break, so they can grab something to eat right now? I think it'll be a, this is a good time before Not we get into the next. Not a problem at all. I'm going to grab a water as well.